On this episode of Extraordinary Women TV. Up next, we'll be talking to a popular author of fantasy fiction, best known for two series of supernatural books, The Women of the Other World and Darkest Power. Here with me in the studio is New York Times bestselling author, Kelly Armstrong. Well, welcome to the show, Kelly. Thank you. This is fantastic. Now, you are a prolific author. You have more than 20 books. I do. Novellas, novellas short stories. Oh, yeah. You've been busy. I have been, <laughs> but it's fun. So. so your Other World and the Darkest Power series is, is really sort of what you're best known for. Um, for those that maybe aren't as familiar for, for you know with your 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 books, um, tell us a little bit about those series and and where they're set. Yeah, so they are contemporary fantasy, which means that they take place in a world that seems a whole lot like ours, except it has supernatural creatures like werewolves, necromancers, sorcerers, witches, and those characters are not the monsters; they are the main characters. So for the other world, that started with Bitten in 2001. Main character is the world's only female werewolf. She is from, a, from a Toronto, and the story is split between her home in Toronto and her pack in upstate New York. And then the uh, Darkest Powers, it's a teen version of that world, but, but with all different characters. So it takes place in a slightly different sub subculture and the Darkest Powers trilogy is set in Buffalo and the spin-off The Darkness Rising is set on Vancouver Island. And some call this the urban fantasy genre. Is that urban natural, su urban supernatural fantasy genre? It is called <laughs> urban fantasy. Um, when I started writing it, like I said, Bitten came out in uh, 2001. They had no idea what to, what to call books that sort of mixed all of these genres. So they were called at one time supernatural thrillers and then paranormal suspense, and they finally settled on urban fantasy. Now, you aren't as known perhaps in Canada as you might be in, in other places around the world. I mean, Britain, uh, you're very, very popular and known in Britain. Yes, uh, it does, and it, de and it certainly depends on the market and what their tastes are, so it will differ for the same books all over the world. Who is your favorite female character? And I don't have one. I think if I did, I would just uh, stick with that character. But I have in my other world series thirteen books, and no no narrator takes more than four. It does change between narrators, and it's because I love telling so many different stories from so many point different points of view. They're all strong women and strong teens, but but with different kinds of strength. Because even though yes, they they have supernatural powers they're more commonly dealing with average problems like jobs and school and love relationships and friend relationships and family. Now your first novel, Bitten, uh, has been made into a TV series. It has. And uh, that, well, it's airing now on space, is that correct? It is, yes. Uh, so they had, uh, filmed that last, uh, last summer, 13 episodes, based on the first book, Bitten, and it is called Bitten, which is nice. How long did it take you to write that novel? That novel took years because that was my first published novel. It was not my first first novel. We often have trunk novels, which which means we wrote them and they're in our trunk never to come out because they are really were practice works. So Bitten would have taken me about five, six years, and it was not a lot of writing because I would have had full-time job, daughter, husband, and uh, so on, and trying to juggle all of that while writing, writing a book took a while. You have a, a huge fan base. What, is there something that your fans don't know about you that, that's <laughs> secret? I don't think so because after a while you've told them everything because you have so many interviews and so many events and I am very open um, so there really isn't a whole lot that uh, they probably have not have not heard me talk about. I will certainly go to events. And while I don't talk a lot about my kids, I do it enough that I will go to, to you know events and have people say, so how's Julia? How's school going for her? And like, yeah. <laughs> now, how did you write so many books uh, as, a, as a mother with, mm -hmm. with kids at home? 
So I was, I was working full time as a computer programmer. So finding time to write was really difficult because there always seemed to be something more important that needed done, like dishes or laundry. And now looking back, I think to myself, I should have given myself permission to have a hobby. I, I would have had no problem with, with a saying, I'm going to do yoga twice a week because I would know yoga is good for me. So taking you know, two hours a week and going out and doing that would have been fine. I should have done that. I should have said, I'm going to go out twice a, twice a week, go to a coffee shop and write for an hour. Because for me, creatively, it's just as important as something like yoga. And I should have scheduled it in like it was a hobby or a class and done it. I mean, my husband was hugely supportive, so he would have had no problem with it. It was totally me saying, I have more important things to be doing than uh, writing, which is writing is very clearly my uh, passion. So I wish I'd given myself permission to do it more. You have a, a, a background in psychology. Um, how has that influenced your, your writing? Well, I always say that anything you study can influence and, and help writing. I mean, I still take courses on everything from fencing to marketing to anything can influence your, uh, your writing. But psychology in particular was for character building. Now I can look back and say, yeah, that really helped me develop my characters. Because I can say, OK, I want to have a character who, in the present time, is like this. And I don't want to have them just have somehow emerged like that. You have to be able to look back and say, what experiences did they have in their lives that brought them to this point? So it's really good for going back and writing the proper backstory to explain how somebody got to be the way they are. And what keeps you, Kelly Armstrong, up at night? <laughs> Probably keep, keep what, uh, what it keeps uh, me up is stories. I mean, I will, if I'm especially into a story and I'm working through the next scenes or trying to figure out a plot knot where I've got myself in a bit of a bind and trying to see how do I come uh, come out of that. So it can be tough to sort of turn off the writer's brain and just relax. Um, writers often uh, joke that, you know, you sh we, should, we should all have bumper cars or bumper stickers saying, you know, writer at, at work, beware, because when the writers are out driving, they're probably plotting. Not safe at all. And now, the Good to Know Minute. Uh, and Kelly, um, it's time for my Good to Know Minute, and I know you've got a great success tip. It is follow your passion. And it is certainly within my, my career, there were so many times early on before I got published when people would give me advice on what was the proper thing to write, what was the marketable thing to write, what would get me published. The book that actually got me published was the book that everyone said, nobody will ever buy that. You've written a book about a female werewolf. There was nothing like it out there, but it was the book that I couldn't tear myself away from, that I was going to write even if I thought nobody would ever buy it. And the more marketable things that I uh, wrote will never see the light of day because they just weren't good. And it really is about following your passion because if you do that, it shows and if you make it, then you get, get to spend your career doing things that you love. And that's good to know. Well, Kelly, I have really enjoyed having you on the show Thank and you. Uh, hearing more about your, your books and your creative process. And best of luck with your TV series and, and your next books that you've got coming out. Thank you. If you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV, visit our website at extraordinarywomentv.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.